pink and volleying for a cure out at the route dome tonight. Jacksonville Crimson's taking on the route rockets. Jacksonville with a sizable lead when Bentley Stewart adds to it by serving up the ace. Route able to answer though. Great set by Josie Nix that falls in for the point. The Crimsons though, they have size and boy do they use it. Jacqueline Keene is able to slam this kill home for the point. Jacksonville goes up by eight at that point. More on the Crimson attack. This is Bridget Lonergan with the soft tap that gets by three defenders and is able to fall in. And then the match will be wrapped up with the eventual ace served up by Andrea Phelps. That would help Jacksonville go on to win this match two games to none. The Crimsons are now three and one this season against the Route Rockets. Elsewhere on the volleyball scoreboard, Unity Payson is too much. Unity is too much for Payson Seymour, rather, winning by scores of 25 to 21 and 25 14. It takes three games, but Camp Point Central takes down Illini West, two games to one. The same for Pittsfield as the Sockies at home handle West Hancock. North Green falls at the hands of Griggsville Perry. It's Griggsville's first win this season, 25-20, 25-17. Marley Bradshaw also with nine kills. Katie Klaus's seven kills lead the way for Liberty past Maradoja, two games to none. And it's West Central who shuts down Brown County. Hannibal Volleyball also with a big win against Troy, two games to none. They have a huge showdown at home against Rockbridge. That coming your way on Thursday. Senior night over at Knox County. This is a very good Knox County softball team, and that's Kathleen Hinkle, your only senior. In the first inning, freshman Shanna Elder opens the Knox offensive fireworks with the triple, and she is labor, later brought home by Bailey Couch, who singles to center. That will bring home the first run of the game for the Lady Eagles. Later on, Canton's Brittany Burhorst knocks home Canton's first run. That plates Katie Schumann in the third inning. Then it's freshman Lauren Dale. This Knox team is just loaded with freshmen. She brings home Bailey Couch. And then Knox County is able to open this game wide open, rather. Shanna Elder steps up and rocks a bases clearing triple. This one very impressive. Knox County handles Canton with ease tonight. Some softball scores for you to report. Softball district play starts later this week, by the way. Clark County, led by Kaylee Roberts, is victorious over Louisiana 6-4. Marion County falls to North Shelby 4-2. And it's Scotland County falling at the hands of Schuyler County by a score of 3-2. How about a little tennis for you? Quincy High against Quincy Notre Dame. If you take it on Quincy High, you usually have to deal with that. Katie Fauble doing what she does best, serving up the ace. She can return some serves pretty well, too. This one coming right at you. Katie Fobble wins her match easily. Quincy High's Delaney O'Donnell, also with some good placement as Chandler Beebe of Q&D is not able to return this one. She's able to do it again, though. Check out the great spin on this one. This one just unreturnable, drops this one in. She wins her match as well. Q&D's Megan McGinn and Gabby Moss of Quincy High, just as evenly matched as they were before. Check out how high this one goes. Too high to be returned even. Megan McGinn wins her match. And then Sarah Boyd, you remember the young Quincy High tennis star, playing the net great. She had a big hand in the Devils win at unde previously undefeated Palmyra, and she's able to win her match. Quincy High wins by a score of 7-2. They finished the regular season 12-4. Well, after he was seen on the gridiron in the Tri-State suiting up for Triopia, Culver Stockton, and Quincy University, he became well-versed in the sport of mixed martial arts after college, and success continues to follow Dustin Jacoby. His MMA record stands at 6-0 now, and he will head to Las Vegas to fight on the undercard of UFC 137. The fight is slated for October 29th, and Jacoby is filling in for an injured fighter. Now, this will be his first UFC showdown, and Jacoby's fight will not be televised as part of the pay-per-view package, but Spike TV does tend to show bits and pieces of the undercards on the air, so keep your eyes peeled, and we'll let you know if we find out anything about his upcoming bout at the end of the month. And a big weekend for Western Illinois means it can reap the awards and honors. Wide receiver Terry and Crump has been named the Conference Offensive Player of the Week as he caught 163 yards, 77 of them coming on this play that you see, to help WIU to a win over 12th ranked Southern Illinois. Josh Hudson also was named the Conference Newcomer of the Week. And even Quincy Notre Dame product Jimmy Holschlag gets in on the fun. He has been named the Conference's, offensive, or conference's Lineman of the Week. Not bad for Western Illinois heading into a bye week.